Today we're going to talk telephones, specifically field telephones. And a lot of people are going to ask the simple question, you know, with the availability of two-way radios and the lack of expense of said two-way radio equipment, why would we want to have a point-to-point -point talk path established with a wire such as in a field telephone type of circuit? Well, a field telephone is very secure and it's very robust as long as the wire that's carrying the traffic between the individual stations that are in the network isn't compromised. It's not subject to interference and it's also doesn't produce any electromagnetic signature which may be a consideration to some people using telephones in austere environments. So anyway, our two phones we have here are German surplus from the 1960s and they're both still serviceable which is a testament to the quality of the items involved and at one time these things were available relatively inexpensive the prices have gone up considerably and you can see it's in a Bakelite -like case you open it up in the top cover here you have a couple of circuit diagrams you have this quarter inch jack and the, you can take and tie two of these phone devices together with a small connection down here and allow two people to talk. Originally there would have been a manual underneath here for it. See your handset comes out and this is your hook bar so that's what opens the circuit. Your handset plug is right here. You have an indexing pin and four active pins. This section, second connection here apparently is for some kind of a headset. Here are your two binding posts that you would hook your field wire to. The one on the right is your earth. So it is possible to utilize these with a single conductor between stations if you have good ground conductivity in the soil. It's not recommended to do so. There's too many variables in it. So it's always better to pull a pair, lift your handset off, and your bar closes your circuit, takes your set off hook. Battery pack is right here. Two D cells. Battery life's pretty doggone good in this, like they are in most field telephones. They don't draw a whole heck of a lot of current. After placing your wire in here before putting it in service, if desired, you can chase your cable to the outside of the set, and that gives it a considerable amount of water resistance from rain. All of your controls, of course, are on the outside, your hook bar, and your push to talk switch and your crank being on the other side of the device. The conductor that we're connecting everything to or connecting our two stations together with is WD-1A wire and I've made several videos making antennas and stuff out of this wire and it's it's good field telephone wire it's fair antenna wire too it's just it's inexpensive and it's extremely durable. When you're working with this wire do yourself a favor and always leave some of the insulation on the ends because this stuff does prick you rather badly when you're working with it and also this gives you a nice guide when you're working with these binding posts. As far as our phones go you have a transmitter and a receiver. Now in a field telephone type of sense they're using a concept called local battery which means that they have a couple of dry cells in each one of these phones that provide power to operate or DC voltage to power the transmitter and receiver. in each one and then the ring voltage which is about 80 volts AC is provided with a little hand crank such as that. So for example we have both of our phones connected together through this spool of wires about 200 foot of wire left here. If I wanted to call from this station to this one I'd merely take my handset off hook and ring the other station the other station would pick up. Test one, two, three, four, five. Copy five, four, three, two, one. One thing to consider when using a field telephone such as this is that you do have to use this switch in the handset as a push to talk switch and release it to listen to the other station. So much like a two-way radio, when you get done with your traffic, 
say over and then release your switch to listen to the other station. One of the biggest problems in purchasing surplus equipment such as this is people leaving batteries in there and placing them into storage which they should never do and the batteries becoming depleted and becoming corroded so if you do find a serviceable set once you place your batteries into it you don't even have to have it cooked cook to another handset when you hit your push to talk button and hold it down with the batteries you should hear its side tone which means you should hear your own voice speaking release and you should not hear it hit the push to talk you should hear yourself talk you do that for each handset I can hear myself talk test 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 now hook both stations together with the binding posts to conductor wire you can use speaker wire if that's all you have you don't need to have a spool of this right here try to ring each station Ringers working, ringers working, and then go ahead and do a live test. Test, 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 test. One, two, one, two. And ensure that the equipment is operating correctly. The kind of performance you should anticipate from a couple of field telephones is around three and a half to four miles, utilizing an arrangement with two phones tied together through WD1A wire. Now, for those of you who don't want to use field telephones, we're going to discuss a way you can press consumer-grade telephone equipment into service as a field telephone. Now, when we talk about a consumer telephone equipment, it uses what's known as common battery, meaning that the system itself or over the phone line itself is providing the power to power the transmitter and the receiver in each individual handset and to provide the ring voltage. Now, one way to provide that functionality is with the use of something like this, which is what's called a ring down box. And what this does is, is this basically turns these two telephones into a fully functioning intercom that provides, they'll, either phone when you lift it off hook is going to ring the other telephone and it actually provides dial tone. And these things are a pretty cool thing to have laying around. Uh, they're typically about $100 brand new. They do require uh, AC adapter and the AC adapter is actually providing 12 volts of AC to the device itself and it consumes about 600 milliamps of current and service and again one of these provides full functionality like a standard telephone over a distance of about two two and a half miles how to place one of these in service is simplicity itself you just plug it into a power supply and this doesn't have to be in the middle it can be at either handset or within proximity of either handset and all you do is is just make your connections to the device to one of your handsets and then to the wire itself and again we're running it through that entire spool of WD-1A and as you go off hook test test you can see it provides not only dial tone but also ring so it's a very good telephone system simulator as well for training people to work on phone circuits and utilizing it in this capacity makes for a very robust intercom system and again it'll provide a two-way communications method from point to point wired like this over a distance of about two and a half to three miles now the down and dirty way to do this with just a couple of 9 volt batteries you can do this with a couple alligator clips like I have here and what you do is is you wire both of your 9 volt batteries in series to give you 18 volts and for a short run you could use a 12 volt battery if you chose to do so but the more voltage that you have in your talk battery is going to allow your circuit to be longer and a setup such as this will allow you to operate two of these handsets uh, talk battery wise for a distance of about a mile and the way you would implement a system such as this is is by taking and plugging in both of your handsets into your spool of wire
and then inserting your battery in series with one of your legs. So let's remove one from our binding post. Clip one leg in. And clip our other leg in. So basically it's placed in there almost like you would put an ammeter on a shunt. And here's our field expedient talk battery on the whiteboard. And when you do this, when both handsets go off hook, they can talk to one another just fine. Now the problem with a system such as this is, is that there's no indication that either one of these handsets has gone off hook. One way around this is to use an LED or, or preferably a grain of wheat lamp and placing that across the terminals inside of a biscuit such as this, which this basically is just placed in series in the phone line and plugged into place. And what this does is, is this gives a positive indication that there is current flowing in the circuit, meaning that the other handset has gone off hook. So that would let you know that someone is ready to talk to you by seeing something like that. Now you can see it wouldn't be all that difficult to figure out how which pairs fed your house and which pairs fed your, fed your neighbor's house in a cross connect box and set up either a ring down or just a simple talk battery type of arrangement to facilitate that uh, point to point wire based communication between those locations. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.